And yeah, you still use like the same AWS SDKs and all that stuff. So you're not having to learn a new SDK config or any of that. Like, yeah, that's really cool. Currently in a private beta. Ah, okay. Oh, do you guys? Oh, okay. That makes sense. Nice, and yeah, free egress. Like, that's huge. That's awesome. Have you always used it, or did you use their uh, migration pattern, too? from day one. Nice. Are you guys hosting on fly.io as well? Because that would make even more sense. But if not, then yeah, I'd, you are on fly.io. So yeah, the integration is just like, yeah, too good. And yeah, Fly.io, like, I just love the fact that they employ Chris McCord and like, you know, they're so like heavily indexed on Elixir stuff. A, I really enjoy Elixir, even though it's not statically typed or whatever. I think if you are gonna be deploying Elixir services in general, Fly.io is like the easiest way to do that. Besides maybe, oh, what's the other one? Gig Elixir. Dude, so expensive. Gig Elixir is totally not worth it. Huh? It's actually gotten cheaper. Okay. I think they recognized the writing was on the wall. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The amount of, like, memory you get. For $10 a month, you're getting... 200 megs of RAM? With no database? Yeah, dude, so Gig Elixir. <sighs> They're really just trying to make money off the fact that a lot of Elixir devs might not be familiar with actually hosting Elixir. But there's also power to it because you're no longer having to dockerize. So you're not like you end up getting a lot of the Elixir nice stuff for free. You know, like being inside of Docker, I believe it makes connecting Elixir nodes together trickier. I haven't done nearly as much of that, though. So, yeah, I would I would definitely lean on people who are more experienced with like massive scale Elixir projects. But yeah, types are coming, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Jose and team, like, really awesome stuff. 